Not gonna lie, growing your own Napa cabbages at home is hard. Too wet, too hot, too dry, and even if you get all those things right, the slugs are coming for them. This is definitely our most ambitious gardening year ever. And everything's on different timelines. So what about the Napa cabbage? They have two growing seasons, planting in the spring for an early summer harvest and planting in late summer for a fall harvest. We started growing our Napa cabbages inside from seed in about early spring. We transplanted them outside and said a prayer. The path to the July harvest has been long. First, the slugs came in droves. During one rainstorm in particular, my dad must have picked off 20 slugs. Soon we wised up and repurposed these fallen burrs, putting them around each plant to form a protective wall. They helped significantly, but weren't enough to keep them at bay entirely. We even found the slugs right up until washing Napa cabbages for dinner. Then the Japanese beetles came. We've seen them around our garden in the past, but this year was particularly bad. And of course, the flea beetle, boring tiny, tiny holes into every one of our leaves. And as if that wasn't enough, this happened. My dad described it as, the cabbages were melted. I didn't really know what to think until I saw it, and then I thought, they are melted. At first, we thought it was Fusarium wilt, a kind of fungus that can kill your cabbages outright or just prevent a firm head from growing. My cabbages! This is a cabbage gone wrong. Just a week ago, this was a beautiful green cabbage. In fact, it was one of our front runner cabbages. And now, sad. So we racked our brains of what could have been the problem. Where did we go wrong? When my dad realized that an overzealous application of alpaca tea fertilizer was probably the culprit. Too much fertilization with nitrogen rich manures can cause the plant to take up more than it can withstand, irreversibly damaging it. Normally alpaca manure is different, but you've got to use it in the right ratio, about one cup of alpaca beans to one gallon of water. So was my dad measuring? Too much alpaca poop. Christina of Choi Division tells us that Napa cabbages really don't like heat. And this past week has been a heat wave basically across the entire country. So obviously not good for a Napa cabbage. But against all the odds, we were able to grow a handful of cabbages with well-formed cabbage heads that were ready for summer harvest. So. This was one of our nicest cabbages by far. This was the cabbage that meant it was all worth it. See that sweet light green center? It almost looks like we bought it at the store. Something we also learned is that Napa cabbage need wetter conditions than what we've been cultivating. A moist but not soggy soil will help get sweet, tender leaves. Not having a brutal summer heat wave also helps. My mom's hunch is that fall is when you get the more tender and tasty Napa cabbages, and after this, I think I believe her. Okay. Say some words about our friend, the Napa cabbage. Well, not the best, but I think we're gonna have some lo mein, maybe some Napa cabbage stir fry. Very nice. Live and learn, farm and learn. Not too bad. And we got some more hopefuls over here. And chickens are gonna, and ducks are gonna feast tonight. These. Now you can see that some of the outer leaves of this cabbage look a little bit gnarly. We're just going to take those off and feed them to the chickens. And something tells me that they won't be complaining.
so the chickens didn't love it as much as we thought they would. But the ducks went nuts for the stuff. To be fair, they love anything in a bucket of water. As we surveyed our Napa cabbages, it wasn't too bad of a harvest. And if anything, this experience has definitely given us a newfound appreciation for farmers out there. It really just goes to show how much hard work and effort goes into those beautiful, flawless Napa cabbages at the store or at your local farm stand. So what are we gonna do with all this Napa cabbage? We gave them a light rinse, cleaning off the lion's share of debris, shook and patted them dry, and then stored them in a metal bowl covered with a large plastic bag in the refrigerator. They'll keep pretty well. They are cabbages after all, so no need to stress about having cabbage for every meal. This batch here is going straight into the wok. Stir fry with a little bit of garlic and salt to see how it tastes. They were okay, but with all the unpredictable growing factors I mentioned, they weren't as good as we had hoped. Since they weren't as tender, the next logical step was to try it in a soup. One of our go-to recipes is a duck noodle soup. We've never even thought to share it with you all because it's so simple that it sometimes feels like cheating. What we do is take frozen leftover Cantonese duck, you can buy it from the store and stash it away for a couple of months, and simmer it in a pot of water until the water turns into a light broth. Season it with salt, soy sauce, white pepper, and a touch of sesame oil. Add the cabbage, glass noodles, bring it to a boil, and finish with scallions. That's it. It's so easy that when my parents go for RV trips, my mom preloads their freezer with frozen duck. It's one of our go-to low-effort noodle recipes. So I know you're wondering, the Napa cabbage definitely tasted a lot better this way than just in the plain old stir fry. Again, chalk it up to that tough summer growing season, but we'll always have fall. Until next time, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, give it a like and subscribe.